Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh and a very good day to all of you. Welcome to my channel. Don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> okay, um Okay, so today uh, we are going to discuss on the first week uh, which is the introduction to Malaysian legal principles. <clears throat> so uh, at the end of this course, you are uh, you are expected to be able to describe the nature of Malaysian legal principles. So, what do you know about Malaysian legal principles? Okay, in brief, and then you also need to define what is law. Uh, the the definition we can find in two uh, places. Uh, one is the general definition, and another one is the definition under the federal constitution. Okay, uh, and also you need to recognize the function of law, and um, you also need to distinguish the classification of law. There are several types of uh, of law which you have to explain, and you need to indicate the sources of law that is being used in Malaysia. So that is what you need to learn for this course. There are only five uh, things that you need to do. Yeah, that you need to know. Okay, and then uh, the relevancy of this topic, the Malaysian legal system to your program. So why did you need to learn the law? Uh, for the logistic, since we have discussed in the introduction section of business law, because you are a logistic student, you are an entrepreneurial student, why did you need to learn the law? So, um, this is because all of the companies, wherever you go, your boss will need you to understand the law. You cannot faham undang-undang tu apa. So that you will not make any mistakes. Kan? You know the law, you wouldn't um, try to breach the law. Simple. So it it applies to all type of of study. It doesn't mean uh, because you are a logistician, you are an an, an entrepreneur, an entrepreneur. You need to to learn the law. No, it doesn't limit to you, and it also doesn't limit to uh, the uh, the lawyer student, the law student. Okay, so I'm teaching to you uh, on how you can protect yourself using the law. Okay, uh, this is the definition that you need to memorize. What is law? Okay, the law it is a set of rules. Okay, it is not just one rule. It is uh, it comes in set, and there are lots of laws in Malaysia. Uh, it developed over a long period of time, meaning it it doesn't necessarily need to be made now, because as you know. Uh, Malaysia itself, it has uh, developed the law from the zaman apa? Paramiswara lagi, Islamic law. We are also using Islamic law and also custom, in which all those were made before we were even even born. Okay, and that law it regulates the interaction between the people. So it regulates the re relationship between us, the individual, and also the relation between us and also the government. So if we don't ha doesn't have the law, um, of course, we will do um, everything we want again. Uh, okay, and it sets standards of conduct. So um, now I know why I need to go to my office because the law saying that I have. And and aku janji saying that I need to go to the office when I I, I am ordered even though in PKP. So because there is a law saying that, uh, giving that order, I need to call, to come to office. And also since uh, students doesn't need to come to office, you are uh, you are able to do an online learning. So the law stated that you don't you don't need to come to office. You you didn't need to come to, come to. Polytechnic, so that it is, is the standard of conduct. Okay, uh, it is the the standard of conduct is made between individuals, between person and person, and also individual and the government. Okay, and it is also enforceable through sanction. Okay, sanction as I have mentioned before, it is uh, also known as punishment. Okay, 
what do we think if there is no punishment there is a law okay the law is given the law is ordered but there is no punishment given if there is uh, if someone breaches the law so i'm sure nobody will follow the law okay because in islamic law also when you uh, you did something okay the standard of conduct if you do good deed you will get pahala but uh, if you do bad things you you, you make sins you also we get dosa it is also a sin so the punishment is masuk neraka ah the the ada keberkatan so as and such uh, such things but in uh, our law in malaysian law if you fail to adhere to the rules what will happen there are several sanctions that are waiting for you for example jail uh, apa lagi uh, imprisonment jail uh, hang to death kita tak ada electric chair in Malaysia. Uh, we also have public service and also fine. Okay, also sebatan. Uh, so this is all. Uh, I think you know already from your understanding uh, in in previous classes. Okay, so the definition of law is is that is to just set a set of rule. You develop the rule over a long of time. It regulates interaction between people, so it may, it may be from individual or between individual and government, and it is enforced through sanction. Okay, four points that you need to to explain. Eh? All right. Uh, definition of law. Okay, we go to video. Is it possible to live in a world without law? Okay, so we can. If I I may, I think I can play this. <laughs> if our malaysia has no laws so please comment in the comment section below okay okay uh, we have discussed on this oh, sorry okay we go to the second part which is the function of law um i will go to the sec uh, the next definition of the this the function of law uh you if the if the exam question is asked about the function of law you may give any uh, logical answer because there are lots of function of law it doesn't limited to these five points only so any any function that you think is logic i will accept so it doesn't only uh, establish rules of, rules of conduct of our conduct it's also give a system of enforcement it protects your rights and your freedom your pro, uh, your rights to for education rights for equality right for liberty and it's also protect the society because if there is no law what will happen to the society okay the rich will become richer the poor become be, will become poorer the, the poor will attack the rich and, and so on okay uh, and also it, it also resolve dispute between people and also between the government itself okay so you may add up as you like on the function of law we go to the uh, the definition of law under the federal constitution uh, 
Okay, the federal constitution is the supreme law in Malaysia, the highest law, the apa, the most powerful law in Malaysia. Okay, because there is no law can um, contravene. What is it really? Uh, me, me, melanggar, melang, melanggar. I think it's melanggar. The 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 other law that exists in Malaysia, it cannot, it must follow federal constitution. Okay, you cannot uh, oh, uh, the bridge, ataupun you you are. Your your law must not be inconsistent with the federal constitution, because as it is the highest law, it it is used to measure the validity of all other laws made by the legislative. So we have lots of law in Malaysia. We have penal code, we have contracts act, we have uh, employment act, and everything. And we have hundreds of acts in Malaysia. So all of those law must not contravene with. Federal Constitution, as simple as that. Because if the law is consistent, is inconsistent, it does not follow the Federal Constitution. That law will be challenged in court and will be considered as void. Okay. So we go to the definition of Federal Constitution because Federal Constitution also defines what is law. Okay. It says that Article One Six O Sub Two of Federal Constitution. It includes law as the written law, English common law or case law, and also custom. So, our federal constitution recognise the the written law, the English common law that is being applied in Malaysia, and also our custom. So, the custom, as we know, we have adat, undang-undang adat, undang-undang adat perpati, undang-undang adat temanggung, adat 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 lain pun diterima pakai. It is also recognised in Malaysia. Okay, for the English common law, why it is uh, recognized? Because, as we know, we are all, we are being colonized by the British. So British uh, enforces their law to Malaysia. So to Tanah Melayu. So uh, in, if I'm not mistaken, in Perjanjian Red, okay, uh, they said if Malaysia wanted to. Uh, reach their kemerdekaan. Okay, they want if they want to be free, they must follow certain certain law given by the uh, British. So as long as there is no new law made by Malaysia, Malaysia needs to follow English law. So that is why if uh, uh, in the next uh, lecture, in my ne le next lecture, in contracts, in sale of good, in law of agency, we are using English. Cases in English law as a reference. So don't. Nanti you tanya, eh, kenapa kita pakai English law? No, because Article One Six O saying that English law is applied in Malaysia. It is considered as a law in Malaysia. Okay. I hope that you can follow my lecture. I'm hoping I'm not too fast. Okay, we are going to the third part. Of the classification of law in Malaysia, so Malaysia we are using common law system. So our law is divided into three. We have public law, private law, and international law. Okay. So for the public law, it is divided into two: constitutional law and criminal law. What are they? Private law. It is com. Uh, this. Uh, it is divided into the other three: contract. Thought and trust. For the international law, there are public law and private law. So you have to only divide public law following the the, the above the con public constitutional law and public criminal law. Whereas the private law is for for the below lah the contract law, thought and trust for the international uh, parties. Okay, uh, we go one by one. Public law. Okay, uh, it is uh, the law. Which govern the relationship between individual and the state. So, uh, for example, um, if you, as citizen, you are not satisfied with the government, okay, first you have to make sure your dissatisfaction is based on two. First, constitutional law. 
and also second is criminal law. This is because public law uh, it regulates the relationship between individual and the state. If you are you are not uh, bringing the case for you, you are bringing the case for all the citizen in Malaysia. Okay, so uh, as we can see in constitutional law, it lays down the rights of individual in the state. So it deals also with the supremacy and part of parliament and rights of citizen. It also covers the areas dealing with state and federal powers. So um, the rights of citizen, we have lots of rights of, of citizen. We, we will discuss on, on the next slide. So if you think that your right is being disturbed, okay, you may bring the case to the court. You may sue the government of Malaysia. Okay, for the criminal law, it codifies various offences committed by individual against the state. So, why it is made in, uh, individual against the state? So, for example, Ali kills Abu or uh, Ali rapes Abu. Ali uh, uh, Ali rapes Alia. Okay, if Ali kills Abu, how can Abu bring the case to the court? If Ali uh, rapes Alia, why uh, Alia cannot bring the case to the court? It is the government itself will represent Alia for uh, re represent the case for Alia. It is not Alia. So the case name will, will be uh, public prosecutor, okay, the representative of the government against Ali. Okay, it's all, it is also same with the constitutional law. Because, uh, this is because when a person um, make offences, do criminal act, it is considered as an offence against the state because it doesn't affect the uh, individual only. It also affects the person, the citizen at large. All of, all of the citizen are affected by those act okay we can we can go one by one okay uh, on the constitutional part okay uh, the first part i have said uh, any law which is inconsistent with the constitution shall be void okay uh, the constitution also provide all the listed fundamental liberties for example liberty of the person kebebasan kalau you are being apprehended by the government without any reason you have the right to sue the government um cinto okay we go to the uh, example okay in the case of lina joy okay versus majlis agama islam wilayah persekutuan and another this is because lina joy wanted to sue the government, the the majlis. So majlis, majlis agama Islam is the government, right? Okay. So she, here she wanted to remove the word Islam in her IC, international uh, national identification card, because she has converted to Christianity. However, um, uh, even though she had murta, she had renounced her her religion. Did she? She, she had renounced Islam. She need to require. She re, she still required to follow the procedure. Here she didn't follow the procedure. She just go to the uh, jabatan pendaftaran, okay, and saying that she wanted to remove the word Islam on her card, on on her IC. Uh, so the court said said that uh, even though the uh, article uh, eleven provides the right for for religion the freedom of religion to the citizen but still by re referring to article 3 on islam is a religion of the federation lina need to go to the sharia court first to um, declare her renunciation of islam and then she can go to uh, pendaftaran uh, jabatan pendaftaran okay so, uh, as you can see on the name lina suing the government because uh, um, so when we go to the sources of law next um, the court will refer to these cases 
that has been applied. So, in in other words, if there is another case of a, of a person trying to remove their their word Islam from the card, they need to go to the uh, Sharia court first. Okay, and also we go to Muhammad Juzaili. This one is for transgender woman. So in this case, uh, Mr. Juzaili here and his other three friends, he was being arrested many times by, by the by the Majlis Agama lah, because they were wearing, you know, the pondan. They were wearing uh, woman clothes, even they even though they are male, they are they are men. Okay, um, so in this case, the court said that section not sixty six in the uh, enactment jenayah, uh, jenayah syariah negeri sembilan it says that if you are a muslim man you cannot wear uh, women's clothes so they try to challenge this section so court says that section 66 of the enactment is not consistent with with the federal constitution because federal constitution give you power to um Fundamental liberties. Um, I think this is on freedom of equality. No, it's not equality. I'm not sure. We will check on this later. But they, in this case, they did challenge the, the federal constitution. Okay. The second part of the public law, okay, the first part is the constitutional law. Okay, the, the constitutional law gives many rights to the citizen. Okay, if there is a, a, a breach of the right, you can sue the court. You, you can sue the government because it is related to gen, pe, people in general, people in public. The second one is criminal law. So why it is considered also as public? Okay. Uh, I have mentioned earlier because it is offence against the state. Okay, uh, the as uh, the crime, a crime is a wrong against the state. Okay, it is wrong against the state. It does not only against the um, mangsa. Okay, but um, it is also a wrong against the, the state. Punishment is given by the state, and the person representing is the public prosecutor. So, the most essential element of crime, and there are two things, actus reus and mens rea. Actus non passive rea, missing mens rea here means that a person is not guilty un uh, unless the, their mind is also guilty. Okay. Um, we will discuss this on this uh, the next slide. We go on the areas of criminal law. So, according to the penal code, there are five, one, two, three, four, five, Five areas of criminal law. It may be offence against person. Uh, the offence is made against you, a person. So it may be rape, murder, grievous hurt, okay, kidnapping. Uh, for offence against property, when when people take your property, for for uh, for example, robbery, gang robbery, blackmailing, and drug crime, motor vehicle offences, and public order offences. Okay, we go to the actors non facit ria mensi ria. It means that if a person did an act, okay, he must prove that he did the act with the intention to do that. For example, if I want to kill myself, I must uh, open the, the window and jump from the from the window lah. So I here I have committed the offence of attempted suicide let's say that i'm not i'm not dying okay so i have attempted to do the suicide okay uh, my act is the act of jumping and my intention is uh, even though intention is cannot be seen but we can see that i really wanted to jump because i i did open and i jump okay for example if i just lay uh, beside the window and the window broke and I fall. It is. It does not considered as suicide because even though the act of jump of falling is there, but I didn't intend to do to do the 
the falling lah. I didn't intend to kill myself. Okay, we can see in the case of uh, Muhammad Yasin. Here, he and his friend had gone to the victim's hut. Oh, he wanted to burgle the house. Dia nak, nak mencuri. Okay. So, at that house, there is a victim. A, a 50-year-old Chinese. A, a nenek. Okay. Uh, in the house. And the, nen, uh, the grandmother knew that Yasin comes to his house. So, he want, she wanted to fight back. Okay. So... What happened is, um, Yasin and his friend, Yasin, they struggle. She, he threw the the grandmother to the ground, and during during the the struggle, the <laughs> grandmother's pants were slip off. The cabut seluar macam itu. Okay, so uh, I don't know the 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 mind of a person of a guy. He was overwhelmed with desire. When she saw the nene with no trousers, no pants on, he raped the grandmother. So, after that, the, the grandmother was found to be dead. Okay. So, so pity. Uh, <laughs> because he uh, initially, at first, he just wanted to steal things from the house. But when he uh, fought with the grandmother... He also do the second offense, which also rape, and then the nene is also die. Okay, the grandmother is found to be dead. So, how will the court judge? Is there actus reus and mens rea in this case? The actus reus, the act of stealing, the act of raping is there. Okay, but the intention of Killing the grandmother is not there because um, the court said that uh, here Yasin appealed to the court because uh, the court said it is not proper for the court to convict Yasin for murder because uh, he never admitted since the trial that he did sit on the victim's chest. chest. So here in, uh, the victim has fractured her chest. Okay. So that is why she cannot breathe. Okay. Um, and compress lung. So that is the, the main cause of the death of the grandmother. So uh, the court says that accused was not liable for murder. But he is still be liable for the, the, for the offense of uh, stealing and also rape. Okay. So in, in case of Muhammad Yasin, the actor's rears is there. But the mesria is no, not there. He does he doesn't intend to rape the grandmother. Okay, in the case of Tan Bakti, here there is a complete actus reus and mesria because uh, when the accused and the deceased, the deceased is the simati, um, they had a fight. When the deceased is uh, sleep, okay, he attack. Uh, he stabbed the disease with an egg dengan sebilah kapak dekat dada so of course the egg penetrate the lung and also the liver then it is the cause of the death so um, the cause the court says that uh, Tan Bakti is liable for murder because the act of uh, murder the act of killing is uh, exist and also the intention of killing is also there okay uh, in the case of PP Zainal Abidin, um, here the mens rea is in uh, is uh, exists, okay, but the act cannot be done, okay. This is because uh, Mr Zainal Abidin and his friend was accused was was charged for uh, gang rape. Uh, he had raped one girl, uh, not he lah. Uh, his friend had raped one girl and in this case Zainal Abidin had tried to lay on the top of the of the uh, victim but he fails to uh, rape her because uh, he did intend to rape but he was unable to obtain an erection so in this case the actor's rears 
was not there. He cannot rape. He wanted to. He tries to, but he cannot do it. But the intention of raping is there. So even though you didn't, um, let's say, even though you didn't um, rape a person, okay, but you you are trying to, you can still be charged for attempted rape. Ah, uh, so pity, Mister Zainal Abidin. Okay. Uh, this is because the court, the court says that the act of lying on top of the, of the woman is already uh, showing that you really, really, really wanted to do. But what to do kan? <laughs> you tak mampu. Okay. So these are the differences between criminal law and private law. So criminal law, it is an injury to the public. It does not injure one person only. It does not injure the victim only. But it also injure the family, the person around you. Okay. So for a, a private law, it is a private injury or a private wrong. Because for example, eh, criminal law, if there is a murder around you. Okay, a murder happened uh, in the house in front of me. Of course, the killer will be around. We didn't know, right? So, in criminal law, it it does not also injure. It does doesn't even uh, injure the person, the victim, but it also injure uh, the pers uh, all the people in polytechnic, the people in Taman Surya, because we are all afraid, because there is a killer on the loose, right? Okay. However, in private law. It is a private injury. Uh, for example, for uh, private law is uh, a breach of contract, where um, I have made a contract to buy one piece of one piece of what? Uh, book from Mahmud. What happened is Mahmud failed to give the book to me, so it doesn't trade threaten the other people around me it uh, it only give trouble to me so i i am the only person who can sue mahmud for his failure to give the book to me okay so that is why in criminal law it is prosecuted by the government and in civil law i am the person the plaintiff i am plaintiff i am the person who have the right to sue the defendant so the terms in criminal law is for the government is the public prosecutor versus the name of the defendant whereas in civil law the name is plaintiff suing respondent so for for example madam zahra versus mahmud so in in uh, the in discussing the case madam zahra will become the plaintiff and mahmud will become the respondent okay in criminal law an attorney will be provided if the defendant cannot Afford one, so in uh, in criminal cases, uh, the court will give uh, also give attorney to the defendant because uh, you know criminal cases sometimes we do offenses because we are poor. For example, drug addict they doesn't um, couldn't afford to hire a lawyer. But in civil law, the parties must provide their own attorneys. Okay, but then of proof is beyond reasonable doubt. So, in um, imposing the punishment to the defendant, there must be a proof beyond no apa beyond beyond reasonable doubt ni is tanpa apa apa keraguan munasabah tak boleh ragu langsung. You must sure that the person did the act, so that that is why he is being punished. So what happen if you charge a person for rape, but he doesn't even rape you? So what will happen to him? He will be lashed. He will be in prison. So it is unfair to him. So that is why we need a lawyer to defend him, to prove that he is wrong. The media can also always say, "Okay, that person is wrong. This person is wrong." But a person is not guilty until he is proven so. Okay, um, in conviction may result in civil disabilities or loss of liberty because um, 
loss of sleep or loss of liberty is uh, you have to be in prison so you tak bebas so penalties is also may include loss of liberty tapi in civil law the penalties are only in monetary you kena bayar then the tak sama macam criminal law okay so the third uh, the second part okay we have finished on the public law public law remember first constitutional law relating to the rights of the citizen and the government and also criminal law all the offenses that we had discussed before okay the second one is private law it concerns with the matters that affect the rights and duties of individual amongst themselves among us so it intends to give compensation and enable property to be recovered from the wrongdoers and also enforce obligation for for example um apa for example if a person uh went to giant and there is a person a cleaner was cleaning the floor but it doesn't put the warning sign awas lantai basah and that person fall and untuk menyedapkan cerita that person is also pregnant like Mia and she was um, having a miscarriage due to her fall so what will happen she can uh, sue the cleaning service okay to give her the compensation so for the cost of her medical bills for the cost of her suffering and etc okay uh, and it also can enforce obligation for example uh, for like uh, in the case of me and mahmud earlier if mahmud doesn't want to sell the special book to me so there is only one book i may apply to the court for mahmud to um to enforce mahmud to sell the book to me so it it can enforce obligation okay so under uh, under the private law there are three types of law okay first is law of contract a basic contract between you and me basic a contract between you and 7e the contract of buying top up contract of buying food you buy car you there are lots of contract okay and also law of trust it is an equitable ob obligation relating to trust Okay, untuk untuk kes-kes pecah amanah, you boleh claim bawah law of trust and also law of torts. Okay, uh, in my case uh, of tadi tu siapa nama tu? Mia, where she had fallen at Giant, she can claim uh, from the cleaning service and also from Giant under the law of torts for her personal injury. Okay, so uh, she can claim for damages first we have liquidated damages and the second one is unliquidated damages here means uh, liquidated damages meaning uh, it is a specific damage which had the plaintiff has suffered so uh, for example the medical bill that, he, that she had uh, undergone and also the the cost of the ambulance and, and everything lah okay unliquidated damages it Uh, it is unquantifiable you tak boleh kira because it uh, it includes also the psychiatric punya damages or what happened if there is a miscarriage so what will happen to her so she can count also that um, uh, that suffering for payment of compensation okay the third one is international law It is defined as a body of law which is composed for its greater part of what of the principles and rules of conduct which states feel themselves bound to observe. So, for example, international law we have international treaties. Uh, so, if if the state think they are bound to observe, they must follow the international treaties like uh, UN Declaration of Human Rights, and there are lots of convention and also. Um, Muslim Convention of the World. I'm, I'm, I'm not. I didn't remember. So it is further subdivided into public international law, which is the law that prevails between the state and also private international law. So uh, these are the examples of classification of law that I can give to you. 
Okay, for constitutional law on the first one at public law, it is the case related to Aisha Bukhari, which is related to the freedom of religion, in which she has converted to Christianity and she doesn't come home. And very sad. Criminal law. A person, a woman was raped and murdered after a right, after accepting a ride home from stranger. So this is uh, a criminal cases uh, under rape and murder. Law of contract, private law. Uh, this is a breach of contract where Fazura uh, has breached a contract with Universal Music. Law of thought here is where a person sue the man. He wins 300k because he sued the hospital for a failure to uh, detect his uh, wife's cause of uh, his wife disease I'm afraid, if I'm not mistaken and the third one is law of trust the case of a uh, high court to kill her here Hassanas 50 million case for breach of trust so international law it can be in public international law and private international law so there are many cases we have Batu Pute, Pulau Batu Pute. We have cases uh, Kim Jong Un, Kim Jong Nam. Uh, we can find in in Google. You can Google, okay? So these are the differences between public law and private law. Um, so you you may find the differences on each tab and fill in on the uh, on the uh, on the right side. I think the the explanation is quite the same from earlier. Okay, so we go to the last part, which is the sources of law. Simple. We have written law, unwritten law, and Islamic law. So the addition is international treaties and convention. And uh, written law is whatever law written in the legislation. The parliament enacted the rules, so that is the written law. The state. Uh, Dewan Undangan Negeri, Negeri enact a rule, it is also a written law. Uh, the Municipal Council, the Majlis Mandam Perbandaran giving you rules, uh, peraturan, apa, gerai di jalan, peraturan tandas awam, it is also written law. Unwritten law, whatever doesn't written in in those three, it is, also, it is known as unwritten law. As simple as that. So it is maybe uh, it is uh, so as you can see the principles of English law, although it is written in the books, the the judicial decision although it is written, but it is not considered as written law. Okay. In written law, it is com comprises of state law and the leg delegated legislation, and it includes the federal and state constitution. So, setiap Negeri dia ada perlembagaan di sendiri, so that is also a written law. Legislation enacted by the parliament and the state assemblies, and also subsidiary legislation is also a written law, as I said earlier. Okay, the part apa lagi yang penting ya? Okay, legislation uh, when it is made by the federal, the parliament. Those legislation is called as an act. Whereas if it is made by the state, you, you have to remember the word. Eh? If it is made by the federal, it is known as an act, acta. But if, if it is made by the state, it is called as enactment or ordinance. So that is a legislation. However, for subsidiary, any ruling... Okay. It can be proclamation, rule, regulation, order, notification. It is all called as subsidiary legislation. So the, the act and enactment is called a, as a parent act. And the explanation, the ruling, the proclamation, the regulation is called as subsidiary. So we go to uh, why subsidiary legislation is important. Because uh, the parent act gives you a general law. But... Um, legislation, subsidiary legislation. It explain the law in detail. Okay, and flexible. It is also flexible because it can be brought in immediately to control a situation, such as um, the regulation to wear mask. 
for COVID-19. It doesn't state it in the Act, but it is stated in the subsidiary legislation. Lack of expertise in the part of the legislature. So if the minister, so sometimes minister is being appointed politically, so he doesn't have uh, the expertise to hand, to give the, the the ruling to give the detailing of the rule the, the rule so all of the detailing was given to the given to the local authorities the person who are very expert in that matter so in uh, how a subsidiary legislation was made first the parliament make an act he make an employment act so the parent act give power to minister to make subsidiary legislation so employment act we can, we see on the next part okay Section 6 of 601 of Employment Act saying that the, the minister may regulate on the benefits, the termination benefits. So that act only state that part. It says that minister boleh buat regulation undang-undang berkaitan termination benefit, retirement benefit. So how much is the the, the cost? Uh, what are the period, what can you do? You can refer to employment, termination and lay of benefit. See, the, the, the last word is regulation. You compare with the first part, Employment Act. So, that is the way we know which one is the legislation and which one is the act. Uh, which one is the subsidiary legislation. Okay, uh, the second one is Police Act. See, Police Act. It says that YDPA yang dipertuan agung can make administration of police fund. Police Act 1967. The subsidiary is Police Fund Rules 1975. Very easy, right? The last part of source is Islamic law. It is the major source in, in Malaysia. Um, it is headed by the Sultan except in Penang, Malacca, Sabah and Sarawak. It is headed by the yang dipertua. So, the power to enact Islamic law is under the state. So, for the constitution stated that under Article 3, Islam is the religion of federation, so the equality, and also 160 of the constitution defines a person to be Malay when it profess the religion of Islam, it speaks Malay and confirms to Malay custom. So, if you are... Um, if you are a Chinese, Chinese and you converted to Islam, okay, even though you speak Malay, Malay lang language, you are not considered as a Malay. Okay, understood? Very easy. Okay, so orang kata kalau masuk Melayu, masuk Melayu. No, Melayu is defined as a person who is Muslim, speak Malay language and converts to Malay custom. So, Indian who uh, converted to Islam, it is not considered as a Malay because he doesn't confirm to Malay custom. Okay. Even though he speaks speak Malay. Siapa nama? Farhana. Okay. The person who was singing. Alah, I forgot lah. Okay. These are the power given to federal and state under federal constitution. So, as we can see on, on the ninth schedule, Islamic law is given to the state. It is not under the power of government. The criminal law is, is given to the federal. So, these are the main reason why hudud does not be, cannot be implemented in Malaysia. Because Islamic criminal law, hudud, okay, in, in hudud, as we can see here, uh, these are the, the sources, Quran, Sunnah, Ijma, Qiyas. The uh, Islamic law punishment in hudud for zina, for zina, for theft, for drinking alcohol is not allowed because it doesn't confirm with the federalists. Because as we can see in uh, Islamic law, okay, we see here in the offence of robbery. The offence of robbery is provided under the penal code. The offence of theft here also provided under the penal code. Murder also cause, uh, under the penal code. Causing hurt also. So, if uh, you were uh, you were being charged for theft, you cannot claim to be tried under hudud. Because hudud 
doesn't confirm with the Federalist. The theft is already here in criminal law as you can see here. So there is a conflicting uh, power lah. Okay, so as we can uh, also we refer to here on zina, illicit sexual relation and apostasy. Okay, we have discussed on the freedom of religion. In Islamic law, if you converted your religion from Islam to Christian, to, from Islam to Buddhism, from Islam to Hinduism, it is considered as apostasy. So the punishment is death. However, in Malaysia, since we are not using hudud, you are given the freedom to profess any religion that you want. It is similar to the case of zina. So, as long as you are 16 and above, and the act is consensual, zina is consensual, eh? it's not, it is not rape, it is not considered as, uh, as zina. Uh, it, it is you, you cannot be charged for any offences. So the the highest one is only for tangkak khalwat sahaja. So, um, so these are the aims of goal of punishment in Islam. We want to deter person from doing. We have, we want to rehabilitate that person, and we and we want to punish the wrongdoer in the same manner as he committed the wrongful act. But uh, as I have explained before, there are no hudud in Malaysia. Lah. But it is under the Islamic law. It is important if you want to claim for hudud, you must change the federal constitution. Because it is the federal constitution that have given all of the list. If you don't want, you maintain. Lah, but you answer here after. Lah. Right, so last one. In conclusion, we have discussed on the definition, the set of rule made by uh, over a long period of time uh, and enforceable through sanction under the federal, co uh, federal constitution. It is under custom, written law and also English cases law. We have discussed on the classification of law, public, private and international. And also we have discussed on the sources of, Isla uh, sources of law in Malaysia. Oh, so that is all for today. For any question, uh, please don't hesitate to comment below and I will answer you whenever I can. I'm hoping to see you again in our next class. Uh, see you again. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. Finish.